Welcome to the wonderful new world of BoldNet. Here we explore how to create new customer records within BoldNet Neo. This tutorial steps you through the new customer wizard in the new BoldNet Neo. Upon completion of this tutorial, you will understand and recognize the elements of the new customer wizard, how to and where to enter key customer information for a successful new customer record, and commit the record to the database. Let's get started. Launching the new customer wizard is available on the left-hand navigator. Click it to start the new customer wizard process. The initial setup of a customer record should be familiar to those who have created new customers in the previous version of BullNet. These are the items we need to configure to begin the customer record on the right foot. 1. Customer ID. This is the ID that identifies the customer record. If left blank and the central station configuration allows, the database will assign the account a unique ID. 2. The one item that must be correct before moving to the next page is the country. This may not be changed after this first page. The only resource if the country is set incorrectly is to cancel and start again. 3. The time zone may be corrected after this initial page, but it is good practice to set this correctly up front. The time zone defaults to the monitoring station time zone. 4. The language is important when the monitoring station has operators that speak those languages. Please consult with your monitoring center for their requirements. 5. It is possible to create the new account as active, inactive, or deactivated. Once all data is entered correctly, click Next. Notice the dots across the top of the new customer wizard. These are called waypoints. Each waypoint is only enabled when moving forward through the wizard. The first decision to make on the first waypoint is if the account is residential or commercial. Your BullNet Neo may have additional customer record types depending on the monitoring station. Notice the customer ID created on the first page now is automatically loaded into this form. Next, enter the customer name. The customer's premises type determines how the file as types into the file as field. This is how the database sorts the customer's record for searching. Please do not enter residential customer names as last name, comma, first name in the name field, as this will cause the file as to be wrong. Most new customer records will have the postal zip code first to ensure that the address entered is as accurate as possible. Type in the postal code and press enter or select the lookup icon. When there are multiple city matches for the postal code, a dialog appears allowing you to select the correct city for the postal code. After selecting a city and state or province, the details load and the focus moves to the street one field. Enter all pertinent address information, including apartment and suite number, cross street and or subdivision. When all is correct, click next to move to the contact points waypoint. The contact points waypoint allows the entry of telephone numbers, email addresses, and web addresses for the site. The fields are formatted for their type. You only need to type the numbers of the telephone number, and the numbers will format to your country default telephone picture. New to BullNet Neo is the ability to set schedules to a phone number while actively editing the number. Here we see there is no schedule for this phone number. Let's say the business number is only available on business days, during business hours, and should not be called outside of those hours. It is possible to add the schedule right in line with the telephone number. After clicking New Schedule, the screen changes to the General Schedule Creation dialog. The focus is on the Schedule ID. This is a four-character maximum and cannot be duplicated within a customer record. Here we enter Days as the ID. The Description field allows for the entry of a more descriptive title of the schedule. Next, select the days of the week and enter the times of the day to enable the telephone number. Remember, this is an opt-in feature. Therefore, the schedule should be enabled during the selected days and hours. After the row or rows are set as expected, click Done. Upon returning to the Contact Points Waypoint, the schedule and description show under the Schedule column. The private checkbox will hide the telephone number from view. This may only be used when the monitoring center has auto-dialing capabilities that do not require them to manually dial the number. If you decide you want to uncheck the private box, 
the telephone number will be completely removed and you will need to retype it into the field. Clicking the Add button under the Email Address or Web Address sections allows for the entry of email and web addresses to the site. The email output device should read Email, and the service provider should be MAPI. The file format of PDF is the default for emailing to that address. It is possible to change it to RTF. After all site-specific contact points are in place, click Next to move to the Monitoring Details Waypoint. The Monitoring Details form allows the ability to enter customer-specific options and add customer passwords. Notice that the codes and fill sections are set to their standard default settings. Make any changes as needed. The Options section allows the selection of items that enable or disable specific functions. It is possible to expand the ellipses to show the specific details as to which options there are for and why they may be selected. It is possible to enter the customer site specific passwords. Remember, passwords entered here should not be duplicated on individual contacts, as the lowest password permissions will prevail. Once all items here are set as expected, click Next to move to the system's waypoint. The systems form allows the ability to add all monitoring equipment for this customer site. Click Add to add a system. The new dialog opens after clicking Add on the system's waypoint. All elements related to the system can be added within the dialog and those waypoints. The ID is automatically assigned as it is an inventory number and adds one to the current number of systems. The focus is on the description field. Enter a description of the system. For our example, this is a system that houses both burglary and fire for this site. Therefore, we create the system description as burg and fire system. The monitoring types are most often alarms only or log only. Be sure to select the correct type for your business needs. It is possible to select a panel type and the details of the panel maximums will load based on the data in the database. The next waypoint on this system creation wizard is the transmitter. Click Add to add a transmitter. The Add Transmitter form allows you to enter a description, transmitter type, receiver line prefix, and transmitter ID. Please know that the ranges are more strictly managed in BoldNet Neo. Entering the caller ID is simple and also formats to the country telephone image so you only need to enter the numbers. Notice there is a scroll bar on the far right of this dialog. This allows you to scroll down to the additional details of the transmitter. The transmitter test interval is now a drop down and you may use type ahead to bring your focus closer to the interval you want. Below the transmitter test interval are all the transmitter options. Remember, the ellipses expands and collapses the further descriptions of each option. Note, any options that are grayed out are inherited from the transmitter type and do not change on the customer. Finally, on the transmitter form is the notes section. It is possible to copy and paste information into this field for key information that pertains to the system and the transmitter. Once all data is in place, click Done. Repeat the process for all transmitters or communicators within the system. When all transmitters are tied to the system, click Next. The Area and Zones form allows for the copy and paste of data from a tab or comma delimited document or from a spreadsheet. The only stipulation is that the columns do need to be in the correct order. New to BullNet Neo is the ability to add an open close schedule to an area, inline, during the data entry process. To add a new schedule, simply click New Schedule. The Open Close Schedule opens over the Areas form to allow you to manually enter specific lines for the Open Close Schedule management or to use the wizard to load the bulk of the schedule at one time. The wizard allows you to select the rules and the times these rules should be in effect. Select the days of the week to include and then click Done. The schedule fills in with the schedule items for each Monday through Sunday day of the week applicable. If a day or two change, their times make those manual adjustments. You can add all the other open close schedule types, if you would like, within this dialog. Each schedule type is color coded. Then click Done. In order to save this new schedule effectively, you will need to select a service type. It is possible to also paste in the zones from a spreadsheet. Remember, the columns have to be in the right order. Once the area and zones are successfully added, click Next. When necessary, it is possible to enter signal translations into the programming form. 
This too can be copied and pasted from spreadsheets, provided the order is correct. Once all the programming lines are entered, click Done. Back on the system's waypoint, you can repeat the process for any additional systems that may be required for the record. Once all systems are added, click Next. The Contacts Waypoint allows you to quickly add the contact persons and related entities to this customer record. Once again, it is possible to add columns and paste data into the wizard, provided the columns are in the right order. Attached to this tutorial is a guide of the contact types and example data. The person icon allows you to add more detail to the persons who will respond to and access the site. The advanced dialog is where you will enter passwords, additional contact points, set permissions, and add mailing addresses as needed. Remember, we designed the wizard to quickly allow you to enter customer records. You may edit these records after the initial creation. It is possible to have additional person types added. We encourage people to speak to their monitoring center for more information. Related entities are specific operations that may respond to or maintain the system. As a dealer logged into Bullnet Neo, the dealer details default into the field. The authorities and branch would require selection from the dropdown. Remember, all these fields allow the type ahead or first letter selection to bring you to the listing you need. After entering all the contacts, click Next. The Call List form allows you to add call lists for specific customer contacts when needed. After clicking Add, the Add Call List dialog loads with the Focus on the Call List ID field. This four character field allows you to type letter and number combinations. For example, we entered RESP for a responsible parties list. There are two types of call lists, main lists and sublists. A main list can contain people, entities, and sublists. A sublist may only contain people and are often used for rotating call lists. The Show Suppress Contacts checkbox displays all contacts and entities that are connected to the account whether they have a telephone number or not. Contacts are suppressed automatically when the contacts do not have telephone numbers associated. Availability and defer to list are only available after there is more than one call list created. We suggest this work be completed after the creation of the new customer. The contact persons and entities show in the left-hand portion underneath Available Contacts. A single click of the name reveals the available contact points for that person or entity. You may add the entire person or entity by clicking the plus on the right-hand portion of the person line or individual numbers or contact points by clicking the plus on the individual contact points. Once added, the list contacts show on the far right-hand column. From there, you can use the arrow up and arrow down elements to move the people or contact points up or down in the list. After entering all of the appropriate data for the call list, click Done. Repeat this process for any other call list needed. When all is done, click Finish to commit the account to the Manitou database. Now that you created your new customer, it is now available to review for accuracy and to add any additional details needed. Thanks for taking the time to review this new customer wizard with us today. During this session, we stepped through the new customer creation wizard. We learned what data is available where and how to add data through this process. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and try to create a new customer in BoldNet Neo. We are excited to see your results.